All right, here's our group for our first day hike. We are at Mission Tejas. We've got a large group this year. One of the things I like to think about um, New Year's is, you know, starting anew, that refreshing, that regeneration. A lot of us, I'm sure, have resolutions. Um, hopefully one of y'all's resolutions is to go to the state parks more often, be a good steward of Texas public land, right? But one of the cool things about Mission Tejas being here is when we can, we do acquire those local um, lands close to the park, um, get new sections added on, and then we start that habitat restoration. strategy for a lot of the snakes in East Texas when it's a little warmer than today is to hang out right on top of these logs because then they have a higher platform for them to strike from and they can see all the traffic below them. So it's not unusual to see them right in the middle of the trail when, it, when it's nice and warm in the afternoon trying to catch some sun. But you can also see them off trail if you ever see big piles of deadfall like this. Just keep an eye out. A lot of times you can see one coiled up right on top. That especially goes for our more active hunters like the pit vipers we have here, our two species of rattlesnakes or copperheads. The water moccasins you can sometimes find up here, but usually they're closer to water, right? But you never know with water moccasins in East Texas. They go wherever they want. They're coyotes, right? If you've ever seen a coyote and you're wondering, did I just see a fox? Did I see a dog? Is it a coyote? Is that a wolf, right? One of the dead giveaways other than size is, can y'all tell tell these tails? They're, they're fluffy like a fox's, but they're not nice and curly. They're not sticking straight up wagon like a dog's. That 45 degree angle out behind them is a dead giveaway for coyotes a lot of the time. If you go back in history, you read a lot about land disputes when while um, Texas and the rest of the West was getting set, settled. Some of that was because of greed, some of that was because of misunderstanding, but a lot of that was because of the technology. If you go back to the land surveys, like the original Hardy Ware land grant, that was like a huge part of where we are now in Cherokee County. The instructions literally say, they'll say 60 chains, which a chain is about 66 feet, I believe. So it'll say 60 chains from the large holly tree northeast of the Red Oak. How many large holly trees northeast of the Red Oak do you think we could find out here? It's pretty easy to get into an argument, right? But the more distinct you can make that description, the easier it would be to justify. Our guide has been talking about this waterfall here and the ferns that grow during the summer and the spring when it's wet. It's been too dry for any water to be in there right now. Underneath that bark in the vascular canyon got so hot so quickly that it blew the bark right off the tree. Um, the Civilian Conservation Corps guys were brought from all over. Typically, they didn't get sent uh, where they were from to work. They got to take home about $5 every month. The other 25 got sent back home to their families. It's one of the big programs that helped pull us out of the Great Depression. $5 a month doesn't sound like much, but they got room and board paid for and three square meals a day, which is something some of those guys had never seen before in their life. For some of them, it was the first time they ever owned a pair of shoes, the first time they went to school, the first time they owned a toothbrush. And five dollars a month back then, a T-bone steak was about ten cents. A game of pool was a penny. So things were a little different back then. You could get a brand new Studebaker for seven hundred bucks. Creates a habitat called cane brakes, Okay, while Arundinaria tecta and Arundinaria gigantea are not endangered species, the habitat they make in large groups, cane break, is an endangered habitat. Log construction tower. It's made the same way with those same types of joint and timber work that you find in a log cabin, but they were able to make a tower. It's about 100 feet high. But to tie it back into the restoration we've been talking about, nowadays that would not be high enough for a fire observation tower in this Texas. So that really shows you how much this forest has grown. In the 30s, the trees were so sparse out here, and the ones that were left here were pretty short. Now the average height of a pine tree here is well over 100 feet. The tallest one we've measured is 148, between 148 and 152. And that was a short leaf pine. So if we still had long leaf pine out here, like we plan to reintroduce in the future, kind of bring it back to that old landscape. Things would be even taller, tower over us even more. First day hike at Mission Tejas. We're gonna say tree on three, okay? Yeah, I, I said it. <laughs> 